Hello and welcome again to the Professional Home Educator Academy Teaching Nugget. I'm your host, Naomi McLaughlin. Welcome. Today I want to talk to you about cognitive objectives. Let's assume you know what it is. No, I'm only joking. The cognitive approach assumes that you, the teacher or carer, has a number of goals you want your child or your children to learn in the upcoming term. So it also assumes that each student, or in this case, your child or children, work towards long-term general goals along different pathways while using different styles of learning. And because of this, because of this assumption, it is necessary to name indicators, which are examples of specific behaviors by which your child would be able to show success at teaching and understanding of those general learning goals. But it is neither desirable, nor is it even good to have a list of all indicators and or to complete a full, full list. It's only, it only gives you a way of structuring what you're gonna do. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's say you want your child to understand the nature and purpose of photosynthesis. So an indicator would be to explain the purpose of photosynthesis and the steps in the process. Your next step, so number two, might be to um, have a diagram and show the steps of the chemical process. Step number three could be to describe how the plant um, photosynthesis affect the animal world. In step number four, you could write a plan um, how to test leaves in the presence of photosynthesis. And the last step might be to make an oral presentation. I mean, not you, but obviously your child, to make an, an oral presentation and to explain how the experiment was conducted. So this gives you an overview of how you could use the cognitive approach and a cognitive objective. What I would like you to do next is to identify and choose long-term goals for your child or children. Then to give specific examples and just to list them down. Those would be your personal indicators. And lastly, I would like you to think about the plan you, you got in your mind and how you want to mark it out. But obviously, please keep it flexible. It should be fun. Homeschooling should always be fun because if your child seems to need a little longer or gets bored in the meantime, you might just want to switch it up a little bit. I hope this video was helpful for you and I'm looking forward to see you again. Goodbye for today.